Oh, no. Blimey! Yeah. Did you weld these on? We ain't gonna jump no more. Afternoon. Which way to Aidensfield, baby cheeks? <laughs> Aidensfield. <laughs> Just uh, follow the road round for about a mile, you can't miss it. First time in my life I've seen a copper doing something useful. You keep it up, love. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're closed. Well, the door was open. Aye, but we're not. We're thirsty. Well, there's a tap outside. You're not a very hospitable gentleman, are you? No, not before 5.30. Oh, I see. <laughs> there. Doesn't time fly? What do you think you're doing? Oh, hello, lovely. We're just trying to get a drink. Look, if you lot don't leave now, I'm calling the police. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> we'll drink to that. <laughs> Every night, 5.30 to 10.30, people laughing, drinking, even singing. It's a pub, Mr Blaine. I don't care what it is. I want you to curb the racket. It's stopping my work. Ashfordly Police. Oscar Blaketon, what a nice surprise. How many? I'll get someone over right away. Spot of trouble at the Aidensfield Arms. Ventress Radio, Bradley. Get him over there. Bellamy, you should go. Uh, actually, Sarge, uh, since Bellamy's dealing with Mr Blaine here, maybe I should go. Good idea. You and I can hold the fort. Can't we, Bellamy? <laughs> <laughs> Another four of them have just turned up. I'd better handle this. Oh, ho, ho. Look what the cat dragged in. Well, what's going on then? Hey, you didn't say help. Hey. Oh, help. Oh. We heard there was a bunch of old men causing trouble. Oh, you should look in the mirror, Grandad. Well, what's going on? What's going on is that we are going to drink a toast to Alf Ventris. To Corporal Alf Ventris. Is there something you're not telling us, Alf? It's my friends. <laughs> 15 Commando, 25th Reunion. <laughs> oh, Mac. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Oh, yeah. Commando? You were in the Commandos. You bet he was. Nothing stood in the way of Speedy Alf Ventress. <laughs> Speedy? On account that he wasn't. <laughs> Only me, Molly. Hello. How are you doing? This is a fiddle, Maggie. You're right. Well, I'll just make us a nice cup of tea. This is my son, Graham. He's come up from Bristol to look after me. Oh, that's wonderful. Maggie Belton, pleased to meet you. Hello. Well, I, uh, I must say, Mum's bearing up remarkably well. Yes, she is. Mm -hmm. All things considered. And there we are, halfway up this Greek cliff, all lit up like Piccadilly Circus, <laughs> and Jerry firing machine guns and goodness knows what all else at us. And I'm thinking, if I fall off, I hope I'm dead before I reach the bottom, when I hear Alf cry out. And I look down and I see him nearly fall off his rope. <laughs> well, I nearly did too. <laughs> and I called out to him, I said, are you hit, Alf? And he doesn't answer. You see, hanging half upside down, his rope. So I go down to him as fast as I can, his bullets chipping the rock all around me. And I reach him and I say, Alf, mate, Alf, are you OK? And he groans, I got it. And I say, I oh, know, chum, I know, but I'm going to get you out of here thinking, how on earth am I going to do that? <laughs> and he straightens up with a grin on him like Cheddar Gorge. <laughs> And I say, hey, what's going on? And he holds up his ciggy as if it were the crown jewels, and he says, I dropped my fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd only just lit it. So. <laughs> I've got to say, I'm shocked that you let an elderly woman in her condition come home. Well, I'm sorry you feel like that, but it was what she wanted. 
Well, she's always been headstrong, but that doesn't mean to say you have to pander to her every whim. It wasn't a whim. It was her declared wish after long talks with the doctor and me. She should be in hospital. She's happier here. Well, is that what's important? Making her happy instead of making her better. The commandos. <laughs> the jumping out of boats, running up cliffs in funny hats, commandos. Yeah, believe it or not, he was on the Cherbourg raid when they blew up the German U-boat pens. His commanding officer got a VC. And, and uh, that bloke over there, Lovell, he got the military cross. Well, did Alf get anything? Nothing. He was asleep in the boat. You're just jealous, Oscar. Jealous? Of course I'm not. Yes, you are. Well, maybe I am, just a touch. Ventress, a commando, it's unbelievable. Oscar, another nine pounds, please. So, Mokes uh, let you go then, eh? Eventually, yes. As soon as Craddock comes back off his holidays, the better as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Rally, run, 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 run. Rally, run, run, It's the best sport in Yorkshire. I mean, it, there's a salmon, trout, pheasant, grouse, the lot. Whose land is it? It's, it's private, but I'm, I'm a very good friend of the owner. I thought Lord Ashley. Yeah, Dave, thank you. I'll leave it to me, will you? How much are you going to charge us? Oh, seeing as, seeing as you're old soldiers and I was in the mob myself, I'll, I'll do it for five quid a head, special discount. But you don't have to pay extra for the rods and guns. Uh, we'll ask Lord Ashley before we do it. Thank you, David. You realise you'll be working for a note. You've been avoiding me. You've got my letter. Yeah, I got it. What good do you think that's going to do? I did my best. I had no choice. Uh, what do you think my father would say? Calm down. You are breaking the Noise Abatement Act. Look at that. Look! What is it? It is a noise meter, and it says you are making too much of it. He calls in trouble, love. No, it's OK. Well, fill us up, then love will drop the last round all over the floor. It's 10.32. You can't sell drinks after 10.30. Keep your panties on, mate. Right. I am reporting you, Miss Ward, and every one of you... On three, two. One, two, and three! <laughs> what a day! Well, there he is, over there. Speedy Ventress. <laughs> well, what are we after? Well, there's all sorts of trout. There's brown and rainbow. And there's a big old pike in there that's been driving me mad. Touch him and I'll give you a few quid. He's a very generous man, is Lord Ashfinley. Well, I would be if he knew about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they carried you out? Two of them. Just because I pointed out that it was illegal to sell drinks after 10.30. Mr Blaine, the owner is a former policeman. I doubt he'd break the law. Huh. How long have you been living in Aidensfield? Four weeks. Four weeks? Mr Blaine, the pub is part of the village fabric. You can't honestly expect to turn it into a monastery. But it's stopping my work. I came here for peace and quiet. I'm an inventor, you see. Really? You know the Blaine Ionospheric kite? No. Look, I'll instruct the local bobbies to keep a strict eye on the place. Local bobbies? That's a good one. They were there last night, just as rowdy as the rest of them. Oh, 
Where are all these fish you promised us? I, I, I can't understand it. Ash Fridley and his lady da pals have probably cleared it out without even telling me. Stealing his own fish? Criminal. I think it's time for some commando fishing tactics. Here, hold this. What are you doing? You can't do that! One! What? How? How is that? Hey, who's got the net? Oi! What's your game? It's the Ash Fridley Hitler. Scarper! David! Quick! Come on! Come on, you green grass! Come on! Come on! Please, though, David, come on! Being part of the community is one thing. Having complaints about your conduct is another. And the Aidensfield Arms is now on parole. So are you. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ventress. I know military reunions can be occasions for high spirits, but your friends have used up their goodwill. Next time, they'll spend the night in here. Clear? Good morning, Ashford Lee Police. Really? Uh, well, well, yes. We'll get onto it straight away. Yes. Lord Ashford Lee. His gamekeeper's just seen Claude Greengrass dynamiting fish. And he wasn't alone. Go and talk to him. Yes, Judge. Oh, you stay with me, Bellamy. I've got something I want you to look at. Bradley, take Ventress. Get him into the fresh air before he redecorates the office. Mr. Lovell? What are you doing in here? Uh, I thought this was my room. <laughs> Sounds daft, doesn't it? And unlikely. What was all that between Lovell and that young bloke? Charlie Penwarden. Yeah. His dad was RCO. He got killed on the raid. Charlie blames Lovell for his death. Is he right? Well, there was a story that an order cancelling the raid somehow never got through. Is that true? I don't know. 200 went over, 45 got back. That's what I know. Roy Tech used to bring me here when we were courting. I never put much mind to it then. I was too busy looking at him. He was in the RAF, you know, a Polish squadron. They were based at... I've told you all this, haven't I? I must be going senile. I hope I die before I lose all my marbles. It's a safe bet, isn't it? I think you're being very brave, Molly. Oh, brave has nothing to do with it. I've been lucky. Good husband, good son, a good life. It's hard for him, the state I'm in, that's all. He's a lecturer in chemistry, dead brainy. <laughs> I don't know who he got that from. Oh, I do. I think I might just stretch my legs. You do that. You and Graham. Oh, Molly. This is a panacea, is it? A drive in the country. This is going to keep her alive. Mr. Rosinski, your mother is dying. There isn't anything that any hospital or doctor can do. So that absolves you of all responsibility, does it? No, we're still responsible, but we are prepared to face facts. So's your mother. You should too. There's never enough stock on any of the estates these days, and even if there is the overshooting and overfishing, it's ridiculous. It is theirs. What's that got to do with it? I'll tell you something. It, the, the, the game stocks would uh, be gone if it wasn't for people like us culling it properly. Well, is that what we're doing? Didn't I say it was? Yes. I must be right, then. Excuse me. Uh, is there a pub or a hotel here? Well, it's dead and still down, but it's full of soldiers. Good. That's who I'm looking for. Mr. Drake! Mr. Lovell. I was just coming to find you at the pub. Oh, here will do fine. Claude, David. See you tonight, Matthew. 
You know what that is? What? A Triumph Spitfire, and it can't half shift, but, but it can't go round bends. Can't it? You mean like the ones you're always driving me round? I wish you could shift as fast. Come on, get in the truck. Three guns, so you better have them. That's very noble of you, Claude. You always have been, to a fault. L I'm not feeling so good. I think I'm going to go back. Well, miss all the sport? Well, leave some for you old folks. <laughs> you cheeky beggar. Oh. Oh. Right, lads. Synchronise watches. Now, I've got a watch. Well, don't synchronise it, then. Anything at all? Footsteps, conversation, anything? Nothing. Do you know anyone who would want to hurt Mr. Lovell? No, no one. Thank you, sir. Schofield, take care of Mr. Healy, please. It looks like the gun went off under his chin. It could be murder, suicide, accident, anything. Yeah, whatever it is, I don't like the look of it. We'd better call CID. I, 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 excuse me asking, but how, how long have I got to wait? Beg your pardon. I should think so, and all. I've, I've been stood standing for nearly two hours. What is that? It's a dead body. And whose gun is beside him? Yours. Whose land are we on? Lord Ashfordley's. Put those three things together, Greengrass, and you are in deep trouble. So you'd better start being incredibly polite to me. So you brought Lovell and Healy here for a spot of poaching? Oh, yeah, but, uh, and uh, Pen Warden, he, he were here and all. Then where is he? Well, he, he, he didn't feel very well, so he went back before we started. Pen Warden and Lovell aren't the best of mates, Sarge. Get Ventress and Bellamy to find Pen Warden. Yeah, but, but, what, what about me, though? After that, Bradley, take Mr Greengrass to the cells. <laughs> what for? I'm not done, no. Charge him with poaching and anything else you can think of. Well, it was just like this. Empty, bags gone. What time? Oh, about eight o'clock. Found this, though, in the bin. Looks like he tried to destroy it. It's signed by Lovell. Father's memory. Fraudulently misused. Betrayed the trust. I'm very sorry, Matthew J. Lovell. What's it mean of? I don't know. Hang on. Which way did you come from? Back there somewhere. And Jim Healy? Oh, over, over there somewhere. And who did this? Probably a very big rabbit. <laughs> Whoever it was, he was here for a while. And he's a keen smoker. You know what you're looking for, then? A large bunny rabbit with a very funny habit. <laughs> How long do you want to spend in the cells, Claude? Where's the body, Bradley? Oh, down the back, sir, with Sergeant Noakes. Who were the three stooges? CID. What's that stand for? Coppers in distress. <laughs> Hope we do a bit better than Sergeant Noakes. She's barely conscious. She's not well enough to be at home. It's what she wanted. Well, thank goodness I was here. You 
should go. Gina said she saw a young Penn Warden in here yesterday. He said he'd got the rooms mixed up. They won't find anything here. Hang on a tick, Alf. What you got? Cash checks. Made out of cash. Drawn on whose account? Fifteen commando widows and orphans. And they're all signed by... I know who they're signed by. How long has it been going on? Well, the first one's dated Jan 61. And the latest is uh, December last year. Hidden in Lovell's case? Yes, sir. A total of £5,400. Lovell was trustee of the Widows and Orphans Fund. Only he had the authority to write the cheques. And the money didn't go to these widows and orphans? Well, it doesn't seem so, sir. I'd heard that the families had difficulty getting money out of Matty. Lovell, that is. I didn't believe it, but... Uh, and there's the letter. It reads like a confession. Lovell and Penwarden talked about the letter two nights ago. It's, it's what started them fighting. But if Lovell was committing fraud, why would Penwarden know about it? Well, his mother, our CO's wife, had been ill for years, so Charlie would know how difficult it was getting money out of the fund. So he threatened to expose Lovell? It's possible. Which is why Lovell shot himself. Well, we don't know that, sir. Right. I want the books and the accounts of the fund seized, and I want Penwarden. Clear? Anything else you want to tell me, Ventress? No, sir. I scratch Lord Ashford and he's back down again, so I think they'll find he won't prosecute. Thanks to you, he'll have the press all over his estate. He'll prosecute. I'm sorry about your mate, Elf. Thanks, God. He, he, were, he were all right, he was. Why, why would he do a thing like that? Hard to say. It didn't seem to happen yesterday when he met that man outside the shops. Which man? Oh, he was driving a trial with Spitfire. David, which man? He said his name was Drake. Drake? Uh, there's hotels we can do to help. Let us know. Come on, David. Ashville Police. You have? Well, OK. Thank you. Hey, uh, Pen Warden's shown up. Police station south of Leeds. Heard the news about the shooting on the radio. Turn himself in. So Drake was snooping round. Oh, it sounds like it. He lives not far from here. Who's Drake? A writer. A muckraker. What sort of muck? Any sort of muck he can find. What he can't find, he makes it up. He's written about Singapore, Dieppe, anything to make the army look bad. Time, gentlemen, please. Now he's doing Sherbrooke. And there's muck to find there, is there? When we got back to England, there was a staff officer waiting. He said, why'd you go in? The raid was cancelled. Well, Matt, who was the highest-ranking officer we had left, he said, what order? We got no order. The next day, there was a rumour that Matty received the order and never passed it on to anyone. That's why three-quarters of those that went over never made it back. Charlie Penwarden thinks that for one. I thought his dad got the VC. His dad got a bullet in the head. Oh, what a business. Well, lads, uh... Went for the road. Cheers, Oscar. If Drake found proof about the missing order, or worse still, if Charlie Penwood put him onto it, it'd be more than Matty could bear. Enough to kill himself. Look, uh, this Drake, does he realise the kind of grief he's caused? I doubt it even occurs to him. This one's on me. Thank you. The time is 10.35 and you are serving drinks illegally. Constable Bellamy, take their names. But they're residents. They can drink after hours. He's not, and he's not. Take their names or I'll report you too. Fine, report me. Look, I own this pub. I'm just entertaining my friends. You can't entertain them and take money for it at the same time. Constable Bellamy! Do what he says, Phil. 
Label each glass with the correct name, please. Tomorrow, when the photo is developed, you can present the evidence to Sergeant Noakes. Sorry, I've... Take me home, Maggie. It's not up to me, Molly. I don't want to die in here. You're not going to. Do you promise me? You must. Promise me, Maggie. Miss Bolton, why are you here? It's a hospital. I'm a nurse. Then I'm sure you must have patients to see. Thanks for dropping by. I'll see you later, Molly. Promise. Kathy, um, Molly Rosinski, is she one of yours? Yep. She's a sweetie. Mm. What's the prognosis? Honestly. Honestly? She'd be lucky to make it through the deer. I'm sorry, Maggie. said the first I heard was on the radio and as soon as I heard I went to the police why did you leave so suddenly I wasn't sudden I decided to go the night before why well because my presence was causing bad feeling with Lovell mainly and I went shooting to try and patch things up but it was hopeless you smoke she yes Is that a problem you were smoking one less than 20 feet from where Lovell was found I don't know what you mean. This was found on the trail that led from Lovell's body to the road, where the tyre tracks that matched your minibus were found. We haven't run tests to see if the butt's got any fingerprints on it, but we can easily do that. Were you in that clearing with Lovell, Charlie? Okay. I was there. I needed to talk to him. Why? Because my mother is seriously ill. I needed money for her, and Lovell wouldn't give it to me. But why sneak up on him in the woods? Why not just talk to him? Because he wouldn't talk. He wouldn't face up to what he'd done. What had he done? He'd stolen money from the fund. I got a letter from him admitting the whole thing. So you confronted him? I told him that if he didn't pay the money my family was owed, I would go to the authorities. Did you say you'd go to Ralph Drake? I might have. I was angry. I'd, I threatened to tell Ralph Drake things. I mean, Lovell had been my father's best friend. But he had betrayed him. I had no idea it would have this result. Sorry. Good 
The police. Listen, my name is Blaketon. Sit down, Mr. Blaketon. It's old, but it still works. My name is Drake. I'd like to report a break-in. Not now, Bradley. Well, you need to hear this, Sarge. Someone called Drake on the phone. He's just caught someone called Blaketon breaking into his office. Is this seat taken? Oh, make yourself at home. Have you ever thought about dying, Claude? Uh, why? Do you, do you know something I don't? Oh, no. No, no. I, I was just wondering. Why? Well, would you mind going and wondering about somebody else? My mum said that she could die happy if I could find myself a wife. Did you? She's going to be around for a long time yet. <laughs> what about you, Claude? If you could choose, how would you want to die? What do you mean, apart from being shot by a jealous husband? <laughs> well, if, if you're serious, I suppose I'd like to be... I'd like to be by a, by a river bank on a lovely sunny afternoon we, we Alfred one side and a nice fat trout on me line the other side and Yorkshire playing Lancashire on me transistor. That would be nice. Not somewhere comfortable and warm, people looking after you. What do you mean? Like in a hospital with doctors and nurses poking and prodding at you all the time. No offence, but no thank you. None taken. What about your book? Which book? Debacle at Sherberg. Must make you feel pretty grand pulling down good men like that. Making their deaths worthless. The raid was a debacle. Achieved nothing despite what the papers said. Men died for no reason. In your eyes? In the eyes of any sensible person. They had intelligence the Germans were waiting for them. They still went ahead. It's not my job to applaud folly, however brave. Is it your job to drive good men to suicide? What? Matthew Lovell. He killed himself yesterday. Why? Why would he do that? Because of what you were going to write about him. He had nothing to be afraid of. Oh, he deserved his MC. None of them would have made it back if he hadn't held them together. The villain was the CO, Giles Penwarden. He got the Admiralty signal ordering postponement. I've seen the original with his initials on it. But he wanted to be Nelson, putting a telescope to his blind eye. Trouble is, Nelson was lucky and Penn Warden wasn't. Why did you and Lovell meet in Aidensfield? He was asking me not to publish. For what reason? He wanted to protect Giles Penn Warden and his family. And you were still going ahead? I was. Until this. Yeah, I don't get it. Lovell had no reason to kill himself. None. There'll be an inquest, so we'll need you to stay in the area. Of course. Apart from that, you're free to go. Thanks for coming back. Clear things up. I'm glad I could help. Sign him out of interest. I'll be on my way too. Yes, sir. Well, thanks, Sergeant Noakes, for hospitality. Sergeant Noakes, Ashfordley Police. Is this the intruder? Yes. Bradley? I'm sorry, Sarge, but you're under arrest. That won't be necessary. Sir, a break-in is a break-in. It's my property. There's no damage. I don't want to press charges. Look, do you know where Charlie Penn Warden is? He's at the station, but we've finished with him. I don't think you have, Sergeant. You see, I don't believe that Matthew Lovell killed himself. The inquest will be on Friday. Coroner's Court will get in touch with you. Ashfordley Police Station. Alf, it's Mike. Don't let Penn Warden go. I'll be off then, Alf. Alf? Not so fast, Charlie. Hello, Molly. This is David. He's here to help. Mr. 
explain. Look, I've come to ask you if you'd be good enough to let this matter drop. I knew that was why you were here. Trying your feminine wiles on me. No. Look, I promise I'll try and be a good neighbour in future. As long as I drop my charges. I'm appealing to you, Mr Blaine. <laughs> but unfortunately, you're not appealing enough. <laughs> Come on, Gina. We're wasting our time here. I'll be in touch, Mr Blaine. Don't forget the glasses. Look, why are you asking all this? You've got all the evidence that you need that Lover was stealing money. It's not just about that. I don't care what Drake says. War stories. Everybody's got one. Evidently, you were prepared to use one to pressure Lovell. And evidently, he felt guilty enough about it to kill himself. No. no don't, don't tell me she's... No, it's nothing like that. Well, then what? Where is she? She discharged herself. She left. She left? Well, how she can hardly move? How did she leave? Tell me. We've got no leverage. No eyewitnesses, no forensics. All he has to do is to stick to his story and he gets right out of here. All we've got is a hunch that Lovell wouldn't kill himself. Oh, it's more than a hunch. It's a good feeling. Oh, thanks. That's, that's a lot of help, Alf. How ill was Penwarden's mother? Oh, I don't know. She's lived in France for years. Well, Penwarden spent some time there. Hence his froggy fags. What did he do for a living? Oh, I don't know. Not much. <laughs> the south of France. Very nice. What? Well, I hadn't really looked at this before. I mean, we read it one way, but it could be read another. I mean, we read it, I fraudulently misused the fund. I betrayed the trust, but it could read, you fraudulently misused the fund. You betrayed the... Do you see? Look, here, have a look. And it, uh, and it mentions the checks, but, but why would Lovell hide the checks on the inside lining of his case? Did he expect his room to be searched? But more to the point, why did he bring them with him anyway? Was he going to confess? Maybe he sent them to Penwarden. Gina found Penwarden in Lovell's room. <clears throat> We're building on sand, Elf. Yes, I know that. Just back me up, whatever I say. Alf, what do you mean? What is it, Ventress? Uh, excuse me, Sarge. Do you know what this is, Charlie? Yeah, of course I do. Well, it's strange how it burnt, or how it didn't burn. I don't know what you mean. Well, even if it had burnt completely, we'd be all right. Ventress, what on earth are you talking about? Uh, D.I. Shiner asked to see the books and accounts for the trust fund. Well, they've just arrived. And it turns out that Lovell kept a carbon copy of every letter he ever wrote. We've just found the letter that he wrote to young Charlie here, and it's quite interesting. <laughs> Would you read it out, Mike? Certainly. <clears throat> Dear Mr. Penwarden. All right. All right. I know what it says. What's that, then? Lovell was giving the money to me. Your mother wasn't ill, was she? The cheques for cash were for you. Yes. Lovell found out about my mother and told me that if I couldn't repay the money, he would go to the authorities. You couldn't repay it, could you? No, of course I couldn't. Then you looked at this letter, and you realised that it could be made out to mean something very different. Yes. All he had to do was to get him out of the way so he couldn't defend himself, and leave evidence behind that made him look like the swindler. Oh, that was very clever of you, Charlie. It's clever of you as well, to let people see you handling the gun that shot him. Then all you had to do was to follow him into the woods and kill him. Did you kill him, Charles? How did you know? Because I knew, 
Matty Lovell. I'm arresting you, Charles Penwarden, on a charge of murder. You are not obliged to say anything, but anything you do say will be taken down in writing and may be given in evidence. You know, Graham was only doing what he thought best. I used to come here. I know. Mike, the lad's here. What are we going to do? I'll talk to him. Mr. Rosinski, I'm so sorry. Sorry about this, Gina. Don't be. It's your job. Well, sometimes I wish it wasn't. Why? You good at it? Do you think so? Yeah. You were born to be a copper, Phil. Huh? Not much rebel in me, then. <laughs> Phil! Whoops. <laughs> Why did Lovell let him have all that money? He was his father's best friend. He felt guilty. Why? He survived. We all feel that. Have you made the report? I'm afraid there was an accident. The glasses slipped and I dropped the tray. I'm sorry. You're not sorry. That was no accident. And we've still got the photograph. Yes. And I have the negative. Don't think I won't use... Look, why is he snooping around? It's just when I was here, I saw some things that concerned me. Don't try to intimidate me. I know collusion when I see it. And I know corrosion when I see it. Isn't this hydrochloric acid? It might be. Yes. Then I don't think it's a good idea to store it next to an open drum of paraffin, do you? It's a temporary thing. In fact, as far as I can see, that's about the twelfth breach of regulations regarding storage of hazardous substances. What do you want from me? The negative, for one. And for two, no more complaints about noise abatement at the Aidensfield Arms. Do we have a deal? <laughs> Can I have your attention, please? I want a toast to two gallant gentlemen. To Mr. Oscar Blaketon. Gallant gentlemen? Blaketon. Who's the other one? Rasputin. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> to Mr. Oscar Blaketon and to Corporal Alfred Ventress. No, no, cheers. 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 <laughs> I hear you sorted it with Blaine. Mike and me, yeah. Mike got him on his combustible substances. Well, wasn't that a bit naughty? Sometimes you've got to bend the rules. 
You are becoming a rebel, aren't you? <laughs> Do you know, I think I must be. They accuse me of collusion. Collusion? <laughs> What's that, then? I didn't know. I didn't want to ask. <laughs> well, I think it's something like... So that's collusion. It's good. Ventress, a commando. Who would have believed it? 